Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So it is now time for the dedicated video where we're gonna take a closer look at the forward voltage sense modification that I have done to my GTX 780 I can't be bothered edition and well yeah that's exactly what we're doing. So we're gonna go over what the theory behind this is, uh, how it's implemented and how I and ASIC whose actual idea was this like this I had the idea to do something like this, but I did it because he was actually looking into it further and then told me, hey, you have a card that, that is, this would be like easy to do on, can you go test that? And, and then I did. So credit actually goes to ASIC uh, for, you know, starting this project. I just had an idea like this a while ago and never acted upon it. But anyway, so, uh, yeah, forward voltage sense. So. I did already make a video where I show this card uh, on an oscilloscope and you can see in that video that the forward voltage sense mod basically does what it's supposed to. It prevents that we are losing a whole bunch of voltage in the e-power connections and the power plane of the card and yeah it might also improve voltage regulation quality a slight bit but um, you know this card needs a little bit more than that to have good voltage regulation quality, the reason you can see right here. This is the I Can't Be Bothered edition, this is a completely disposable card as far as I'm concerned. I have a properly e-powered 780 that has a better core and better memory than this. Uh, the only reason why I e-powered this card is, well, it, it, it arrived like this. So it arrived with this crater in the VRM. So this destroyed the upper two V-core phases, leaving only four phases functional on this VRM. And, you know, reference GTX 780s are already a fire hazard with all of their six phases working. Uh, I was not gonna risk try to run this on four, so really the only way to ever make this card work was, was with the knee power. Though I already have a go D powered 780, so I was just like, well, I'm gonna E power it, I'm gonna make the card work, but I'm not gonna put a whole lot of effort into it. That's the story of this card. So, yeah, this is now a test card, and it has tested forward voltage sense. But yeah, so, um, yeah, so like the, the main idea behind forward voltage sense, like a forward voltage sense mod for an E powered card, is because when you E power something, this is pretty much always just been like an accepted drawback of an e-power is well the e-power is an external VRM it's it's not connected to the card in any logic way there's no control logic between the e-power and the card the external VRM is simply delivering power to the card and the card can do nothing other than be powered by it so there is no control logic between the two which can be good like, you won't have a power limit anymore, for example, because the card literally has no way to enforce a power limit with an external VRM, but this also has drawbacks, because, well, since the ePower board is in itself a completely functional unit, it does not depend on the card to work, uh, this means that the control loop for the external VRM is also completely contained on the ePower board itself. It is not connected to the card, usually. Now, usually, you have the control logic of your onboard VRM connected to the thing you're actually powering because, well, if you want to have clean power for something, then you probably want to measure the power that's getting to that part so you can counteract any interference or transients that you might be experiencing. But ePowers don't do that because they, they are an external module. So ePowers regulate their voltage at the output right here where the VRM inductors are. They don't regulate it based off readings from the part that you're actually powering again because they are just independent modules. And this leads to the main problem that you just drop a lot of voltage because even though these are pretty thick power like copper strips and then the power plane and the PCB is also quite wide it, it still has a real-world resistance, inductance, and capacitance, and that is something the ePower cannot compensate for because it cannot measure the impact that these real-world uh, phenomena have on the voltage. 
And that's basically what we want to implement with the forward voltage sense mod because we have removed this VRM's reliance on this spot right here to regulate its voltage and we have rewired it to be, be the backside of the core which now makes this e-power at least as far as voltage uh, um, referencing is concerned act like it is actually an integrated VRM not an external one because now it's regulating the voltage based on what's going on here not here so all the voltage drop that happens in between, in, in the connections, the soldering, the onboard power plane, all of that can now be compensated for. And if you watch the other video, the main way how you see that is that you put a load on the card and your voltage no longer drops. It still droops a little bit because there is a load line on this, but that is an intentional drop to help with transit response. like. How LLC works is an entirely different thing. You do want to have some V-droop, uh, so that is that is wanted, but we don't want to have the massive unintentional voltage drop that occurs when we just have no way of measuring the voltage that's actually getting here. So how would we do that? Well, the forward voltage sense mod is these two wires right here. So the white one is ground and the green one over here is V core are positive, and they go down here through this screw hole and then to the back of the core to this one capacitor. And here you can also see where my oscilloscope hooked up, so they're pretty close together. So, this is a V core capacitor. So, we, we have a ground side, a positive side, and we just take those wires and reference the voltage that's at this capacitor and not, uh, well the output of the VRM here, which would be these inductors and, 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 and bulk capacitors and stuff like that. So, it's a pretty easy mod. We literally just sol um, solder two wires. We do need to disconnect some traces. As you can see right here, you can see I scratched the stock two traces because those two traces, well, those are the integrated traces. They reference, well, before I cut this e-power out of a dead GTX 580, they did also reference the voltage at the core of the card. But when you cut an e-power like this, they start referencing other places. Uh, and some sometimes they also don't reference any, like the memory VRM on the GTX 480. Um, but this is still connected to the VRM output if you cut it. So we got rid of those two traces. Like, I just cut them. And then... Uh, went to the uh, traces back, they did have two probe points, so I just used those to solder onto and then put those wires there. And now the only voltage reference that the voltage controller gets is actually at the core. And yeah, so how would you go about implementing a mod like this on any other card? Well, we haven't 100% idiot proofed the process yet. But basically it goes like this. Now any VRM controller has to measure the output voltage because there's a feedback loop connected to it. The voltage controller needs to know what's actually happening at the output so it can decide, oh, we're a little too low, oh, we're a little too high, or it's exactly at the level it's supposed to be because the voltage controller needs to react to the thing like drawing a bunch more power, which makes the voltage drop, so the controller needs to raise the voltage a bit so that the part doesn't crash. So, it always has to reference <coughs> voltage somehow. And on most controllers, it should be implemented something like this. There's gonna be these two traces that I just showed you that I cut. They are going to simply a ground reference and some reference point for the output, usually as close to the part you're trying to power as possible. And then those two traces usually also go directly to the controller already. They're usually called like sense plus or sense minus. And then those traces are also usually connected to the both ends of the voltage divider that's connected to the feedback pin of the controller. So based on that, it should be pretty easy to identify those two traces because, well, you can either just see what's connected to sense plus and sense minus. Sometimes there are some uh, resistors between the pin and the actual uh, trace. Um, or you can also just look at your feedback pin and then look at the voltage divider connected to that feedback pin and then just like go to the positive end and negative end of it 
and then you should also have your connection. You just disconnect the traces then and then rewire it to wherever you want. Um, there are some controllers where it's a bit different, which is the part why we haven't 100% idiot proofed it yet. For example, here we have a GTX 480. Uh, this 480 is dead and it will become an e-power and this is gonna be another proof of concept because this is using a CHL8266. This one does not have a regular feedback pin. This is kind of using its Sense Plus as a sort of feedback already. Like this is this does not have a dedicated feedback pin. Uh, so it's a bit different in how things are implemented. But it will still have a ground reference and an output reference somewhere. And really all you need to do is you, you find a pinout of the controller. You look where the sense plus and the sense minus is, and then you just follow the trace that comes out out of that pin until you find a point where there's a zero ohm resistance to the output or ground. That's the point where it's just straight up connected to it. You cut the trace there and then you can rewire that. It, it's not really hard in theory. Now wait, we haven't demonstrated it with a controller like this yet, which is the part of why it's not idiot proofed yet. Um, but we have demonstrated that it works with these, with the controllers that have a dedicated feedback pin. Like, like this wire right here, that's actually the one connected to the feedback pin. Um, so like this wire is sort of in between these two. Like these two feed the reference voltage into a voltage divider and then this one skews the voltage divider with this potentiometer so we can actually change our voltage. Uh, these two wires, they, they just power the controller, those are not important for that. Uh, and yeah. So in theory, it's a pretty easy mod. Um, you do need to like go a little bit hunting on the PCB, like you need to follow some traces and then measure some components and then, you know, find the two traces that, that just have a zero ohm resistance to, to ground and the output and then you need to kind of cut those and be careful to not damage anything else on the PCB and then rewire it. Like it's a, it's a bit of an involved mod um, physically. But theoretically, it's, it's not a very complicated thing. You're literally just changing the place where it gets its voltage reference from and identifying those points where the controller is connected to that reference is, shouldn't be that hard. Um, yeah. So, I guess that's it. Uh, I do want to, at some point, make a bit more of an involved tutorial for this. Uh, like, it, yeah, because like, I mean, people that, that do e-powers and stuff like this regularly, they, they, the, what I've just said will be just fine for them and they'll be able to do it, but like, people that uh, are watching this content to like, get into overclocking and understand what, what we're doing here, uh, this explanation might not be uh, the best for that, since I just used a lot of technical words and, you know, I can't really show anything because like, this is just, you know, for this one PCB. Um, which is why we, we want to test it with a 480, because GTX 480s are like actually perfect for like turning them into like medium power e-powers, because like they're cheap to get, uh, they are also I easy to like get working, they will have core and memory VRM output, and we are also gonna hopefully have working forward voltage sense for uh, core on these, so GTX 480s. As long as it can power the finger trying to power like perfect low cost DIY e powers. So, yeah. And I guess that was mostly it. Like, at the end of the day, it's just two wires that lead to a different point. So, it's a 14 minute video only. I, I, I promised to turn two wires into a 20 minute video, but I guess that's not happening. Well, I guess with the other video, it's like way more than 20 minutes anyway. Yeah, I, I, I hope this makes somewhat sense. Uh, like, other people that are e-powering their cards, feel free to experiment with this. Like, see if you can maybe see more, like, better improvements, because, like, this e-power, the, the connections are really bad. Because of that, I can't really, like, say a lot other than, hey, the voltage doesn't drop under load anymore. Um, because I am interested in knowing like what uh, voltage regulation, quality, and transient response uh, implications this has, because it should make it a bit better.
Like it should, but I, I can't put a number on it. I can quantify how much it does because this this is just an, a horrible e-power job. Like one, once I turn this card into an e-power, I don't know what I'm gonna connect it to yet, but I'll, I'll find something. Uh, then maybe I can make a proper test. But uh, you know, other people, like I don't know, uh, who who does this? ASIC does e-powers, Exabarius does them, Bullseye does them, Tag, like there's a bunch of people uh, with YouTube channels that uh, also do e-powers. So any of you who are watching, feel free to try this. Uh, and with that, yeah, uh, video really is over now. Goodbye.